Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ray Bozinski. I'm coach for whether or not I think this is my eighth test writing uh, for uh, for this. So I guess I've been doing it a bit of a, uh, a bit of a time. Um, like you guys, I was in your uh, seats many years ago. My son did this back in 2008 and 2009. So I was a coach uh, for weather as well. So um, I don't know how many of you guys are all brand new versus, again, anybody who's coached in the previous years. Um, the uh, event is pretty straightforward. It is a uh, it is a question and answer test. It's a multiple choice test. Um, it's been like that now for the last uh, seven years. The way it operates uh, is it's two sections. Uh, the first section is um, 10 images, GIFs, uh, uh, or slides uh, being presented, uh, and there's two questions per slide. The section booklets will be separated for section one and section two. Um, I will show each photograph or image for 30 seconds, and then go back after all 10 have been shown to show them for another 10 seconds. Um, the room will be a little darkened depending on where we're at. Hopefully a little bit of ambient light. We try to play with it, but every uh, place varies a little bit. Um, pictures should be straightforward. Never try to actually uh, try to catch anybody uh, at all. Uh, the questions are all uh, either two, three, or four potential responses. There is an absolute correct answer. I don't do true and false. Uh, we don't think that's fair. Um, the second part of the question uh, of the test is approximately 50 questions. Again, multiple choice uh, to be able to then uh, finish that off. The test is done on a zip grade. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with zip grades or not, but they're like the old Scantron for those of us a certain age in college, um, similar type. So make sure the kids are familiar with it. Every once in a while, we have kids who completely are oblivious to how to fill it out. Um, I will do my best to explain the uh, rules on how to be able, to, how we're gonna be working, but every once in a while you get some tears. So they all have, the zip grades have to be filled out completely. They can write on their test booklet, but the test booklet means nothing. Uh, even if they've answered every question correctly. Um, again, if it's not on the zip grade, it's not. Make sure they follow the, how the numbering is on the zip grade. It's usually uh, straight, down a, uh, straight down a column one through whatever number it would be, and then subsequent columns across. But kind of get one of those if you have it from previous uh, tests, or I don't know if uh, the uh, they make them available just so the kids get a little bit more comfortable what they look like uh, in timing wise. Kids can talk a little bit. I don't have a problem with that, but I may have to give a few little warnings if it's getting a little too loud. Um, most kids are really good about it. every once in a while we get uh, some uh, boisterous individuals. Um, encourage also the kids to stay in their seats or surroundings. So again, that we're not distracting to other kids. Um, the, the, the main theme of the test this year is on fronts, air masses and weather instruments, humidity and pressure. It's on the sheet that you guys should be available on the site. Um, uh, in doing that, which means about one quarter to one third of the test will be involving that material. Um, I provided you a list of topics that to be familiar with. Um, I don't generally, de I don't deviate from that. Not trying to trick. We don't do weather history. Um, you know, I'm not browbeating on climate change or anything of that nature. I'm not getting into any of that kind of material. Uh, there are no calculations necessary on this. I generally try to provide both Fahrenheit as well as Celsius, just so kids actually kind of get used to doing what the metric system is. Uh, but uh, uh, they will, they should be familiar. Um, it will probably end up being about a total of 70 questions, which sounds like a lot, but to tell you the truth, about 80% of kids actually teams do finish it all. Um, it, it, the, the questions are straightforward and I'll show you a couple examples. Uh, on doing it. Now, there's a little bit of an issue, unfortunately, since this is a, uh, it, it runs over two different districts. So some teams have kids as young as third grade and some as old as sixth grade. It, it's difficult to be able to write a test to make sure that again, it, it reaches the uh, language 
uh, abilities of those kids. I do have it proofread by a couple of elementary school educators, um, you know, to make sure that my wording is within reason uh, for these kids. Um, but it's still potentially going to be kind of tough for some of the third graders. So I always encourage teams that, you know, if you have a third grader, so for those actually in Lons Cruz and, and, and um, in Chippewa Valley, that you probably pair them up with a fifth grader or a fourth grader, just to make sure, again, that the reading skills are adequate enough so that they don't have to suffer, suffer through it. Um, you know, I'll answer uh, general questions with regards to the exam, but content issue again, probably uh, again, won't be able to. Um, the kids can actually have one five by eight card on both sides per team, not per individual, but per team. You could have anything on it that your heart desires um, that will allow for the kids to actually be able to uh, cue them in on some information and being available. Um, no devices are allowed in the uh, you know, in the testing center whatsoever. Um, again, we don't want to have any questions of impropriety and of cheating. Um, phones need to be kept. The kids are going to be in a safe environment. Uh, it's only going to be 30 minutes long. They can be without devices for a while. Uh, if for some reason there's something that absolutely needs to be a device, such as a child who may have diabetes and being that way, I want parents to be able to talk to me. Uh, again, it can be kept to the side and things of that nature, but we want to make sure there's no questions here. Um, as I said, there's a two part with uh, 20 questions in the first part, 50 questions in the second part. Uh, in case of a tie, uh, what I do is each of the questions have a point value of one, two, and th uh, or three. I determine which uh, the value it is. So the first tiebreaker is a number of three point questions getting correct. Um, uh, and that has worked out fairly well. Then there is actually a short answer uh, question that I give for the kids as the second tiebreaker only to be looked at if the first tiebreaker is not met. Um, and I encourage the kids to answer it. Uh, spelling does not count. If I can figure it out, it's okay. Um, so and, and I'm pretty I'm pretty good at it um, and encourage have the kids to be done. I will say last year first place in one of the divisions came down to that second tiebreaker and one group answered and it wasn't much but the second group didn't and that was the split. So again just to be able to take a look at it one of the other kids may be able to answer on that one. We usually have it the answer is at the bottom of the zip sheet to be able to answer it. Um, so that's where it will go. I will go through the rules on the kids at uh, district as well as at county. Hopefully again district we have a little bit more leeway with time. In county we don't actually have much leeway. Um, we only have a 30 minute split. Again the longer it takes to actually get directions under and getting kids settled down will actually potentially take into their time on the test. It takes approximately six and a half minutes of time to go through all the images uh, and the questions. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, it, that means it leaves us probably about 20 minutes to do the remaining 50 questions. So it's one of those things just to make sure that the kids come in and they're ready to go. Want a, uh, a number two pencil, we will have some available if necessary, but encourage the kids to be able to bring it. Um, I always tell my my uh, coaches generally the quickest I think I've ever seen a team get done is about 20 minutes. Most are, uh, are will uh, maybe be done the few minutes before the time limit. Um, so again, if you go away for just a few seconds, come on back there. If kids are completed with the test, they may leave the building. However, once they leave, they may not return. So I also encourage the kids, make sure we're going to the bathroom before and that if you leave, unfortunately, I can't allow you to come back into the bill, into the testing area. So uh, we want to make sure that we keep things all on the up and up for all the other all the other teams. Um, trying to think if there's anything else there. Um, as I said, you should have that sheet. I don't know if you have looked at it yet. I also gave a resource list. I've got a few more books I'm going to be looking at. If I think it's something that might be worthwhile for coaches to be able to utilize and to look at, um, I, I will put them uh, and post them on the site. Uh, a couple of them look promising um, yeah, to be able to do it. And a lot of this actually is, again, the coaches kind of preparing and helping actually to educate the kids. 
there's a few things that the kids I think can learn on their own and being able to do it as self learners. But I think it's nice actually for the coaches to do it. I will tell you probably when I did it, my first one, I probably spent more time preparing and coaching them than what the kids actually did actually being able to learn the material. Um, but I, I, I probably would be there up to a, upwards of about 60 hours of prep time for them. Now it got him a one. It finished in first place, but again, it, it falls a little bit on it, but it makes it easier for you if you're comfortable being able to explain, um, explain the, uh, the information to them. Um, stuff is pretty straightforward. There's a lot of good resources up in there that you can go to uh, to help to explain it. Um, I put down a couple of books that if you guys are really nerds that should be able to go back and get some more information and be able to learn it. Uh, but uh, uh, that should be, you know, that should be about it. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. All right. Are there any kind of questions at all whatsoever before I show you a few examples? I don't know how you want to handle it, Nikita. Do you want to have them to turn on their their mics and go, or is there a written portion here that they can do it? Yeah, they can either ask in the chat or unmute. Okay. Um, yeah, because I don't see the chat room, so maybe if I click on the chat room, maybe I can. There we go. All right. No questions. There's somebody there. All right. You got. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead and ask. Me, Sue. You got Sue, yep, Sue, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sue. I don't know where the resource list is. Uh, uh, Nikita, I sent it uh, to uh, sent it to you guys on Wednesday and was said that it had it. Um, is yeah, there, so it, all of those should be posted on the website under the specific okay. event. So if you go to the McCormick okay. Science Olympiad website and go under whether or not um, all the resources should be posted there, and if they're not posted yet, the recording, the presentation, all of that will be posted relatively okay. soon after today's uh, meeting. Okay. So those are books. Are there any videos they should watch? Uh, you know, there may be on a couple of the sites that I did give you uh, that maybe, uh, you know, could be, uh, could be useful. Um, I uh, have not gone. There's an educational bit through Comet, it's called out of the University of Colorado. Uh, again, the site's there and they do have some videos to go through. Uh, of course, believe it or not, the Weather Channel does do a nice job. They do have some things that are available to be able to explain some topics uh, you know, for kids as well. Okay, thank and you. again, with, yeah, with some of the books that I did uh, put in the listing on there, again, they are in mostly in that fourth to sixth grade reading level. So again, to be able to. Now, sometimes it's nice that some of those books are really good, but it'd be nice to have. A, sometimes they don't explain enough. That again, that's where again allowing the the, the coaches to provide a little bit more oomph there um, by understanding the the material. So, but uh, those listings should be there. And if not, again, it's fairly similar to last year's in, in terms of um, in terms of the topics. Really, I haven't added anything new. Uh, to the listing, um, you know, it's broken down into things like atmosphere, air pressure, uh, air masses, humidity, pressure, uh, thunderstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, winter weather, weather watches, uh, instruments, clouds, wind, um, uh, seasons and equinoxes, uh, water cycle. Um, there's a couple other that I'm never have my sheet up in the front of my head, uh, but they should be there. Uh, if not, if they didn't update, they should have last year still there. And the only thing is the top portion information about what the uh, emphasis is on this uh, coming year. Otherwise, things are staying fairly the same. So, are the, are the kids going to start at a random number of like a state, like nope. a station? No, nope. no, we don't do it. It's not a station test. You know, the old days it was a station test. I think that was really confusing and spent more time moving. So, nope, this is a stationary test. Uh, they stay at their own, uh, whether it's a group of, uh, it's a, area, a table that's set up or uh, uh, desks that are, are, are together. Um, uh, it depends on what site we're at. Uh, and that's way they are able to do it. Is that a computer yeah. per trial, per team? Nope, it's all written. So oh, it's all okay. paper pencil. There's no there's no computer available. I show this. I sh I project them on a forward screen. For oh, the forward, okay. For okay. the image. Okay. So yeah, no computers. No no computers are involved. Again, no no electronics. It's strictly actually a, a paper and pencil test. 
So, uh, and there will be nothing on, uh, at least not a, uh, this year, I'm thinking about a few other tests uh, in, in the future about whether or not uh, putting some images or things uh, or graphs or whatever on the test itself. However, the, uh, the powers that be like the idea of having it at about 70 questions. Uh, I know every once in a while I question it too, but again, the whole idea is that we, we really, we want the kids to have a good learning environment, but the uh, idea is that we want to make sure that we don't uh, bunch too much, uh, that we can actually have uh, a clear delineation points uh, rather than having to go through um, a, a lot of ties. So again, the more questions that are available, the more likely that you're going to be able to actually find more definitive, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to look so for the way. If they yes, can go back, if they can't oh, figure something out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I encourage my kids again, if they want to, uh, again, it's the way I, I tell my own kids to be able to do it. If you, if you're not too sure about an answer, maybe circle it on there and then come back. Don't spend too much time. Go back. Now, again, when you're filling out a Scantron or a zip grade sheet, you got to make sure you're filling out the appropriate question number. So for some of these kids, it's a little bit of a challenge, you know, that's happened to those of us in college. Uh, it's probably one of the recurring nightmares uh, is that we didn't fill it out correctly. So uh, other than that, let's see here. There's a few questions in the chat asking if you can yeah. clarify which topics are being emphasized for the season. The 2024 the, handout the, says air masses, fronts, and winds. Is that correct? That's last. Uh, no, that's last. That was last. That uh, was last time. It should not be. It should not be. I, I put it in there. It shouldn't be. It should be air masses, uh, weather instruments, uh, humidity, and humidity, pressure, and fronts. I'm going to have to double check, but that's what I sent. That's what it should be, unless something got unless something got snap food. But it should be it should be those those five topics that are going to be emphasized. Can you say them again? The air masses, weather instruments, fronts, uh, humidity and pressure so they'll account for about uh 25 to uh you know 30 percent of the questions so you're, you're talking about somewhere between 17 and 21 questions so it means again you're you're gonna uh you know again you're still gonna have a substantial motion spread across uh across the board i i'm gonna show you a couple of examples of how i write the questions and what a couple of the images uh, uh have I there are no old tests uh, available to look at because there's really again a limited number of questions uh, that we you can ask and since we have to write um, 270 question tests per you know per year that's 140 questions so again if I have those out there then again are, are the kids really learning versus just memorizing a question that they saw so I don't make those available Another question is the DNR had a helpful workshop last year. Do you know if they'll be having another one? I year? don't know. I don't know. They did have it. Uh, they were talking about it, but I have not been notified about it at all. Um, uh, so I don't know if anybody's uh, notified uh, the main group, Nikita, on that one. I know they had it available, but I'm not usually involved in that decision making, so I don't know whether or not they are. And unfortunately, I have never been able to do it. I'd love to know if they are, because I'd love to go ahead and see um, to see what they're they're presenting, and then be able to work with them so they understand how my test is written to be able to help you guys as well. Uh, for Mr. Shaw, there it is one note card, five by six, both sides per team, not per child, but per team. OK, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm trying to uh, maybe maybe they still have last year's. Maybe had last year's thing up still on it. Does it say 2024 on the top or 2023? It doesn't 2024. I don't know what in the world happened. All right, OK, I'm going to have to go back and take a look and I'll, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send the new one as well. Yeah, see, it looks like it says 23. Five by eight, five by eight card. And there are, you can make your own, of course, if do that one. There are actually five by eight index cards that are available uh, as well. 
So, and again, I do tell kids actually, again, when they go through, since every one of the groups either has their own district uh, meet uh, or at least a practice session in, in the case of Utica, you know, take a look actually when you do the test. Uh, if it's like, okay, wait a minute, this card doesn't actually work well for the information I need, I can redo a card. You can actually, of course, you know, uh, use a different card uh, between the district as and the county test. All right, trying to see if there's anything else. Yeah, it looks like it's. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I apologize, guys. I don't know what happened with that one, but. Uh, like I said, I'll double check and we'll make sure we put it out there that it's it's updated uh, on that. So you guys know what the what the what the uh, focus is going to be on. Um, all right, Nikita, if we can actually show uh, the uh, the PowerPoint for the questions and images. Yep, I'll share that now. I know yesterday when we. Uh, looked at it, I was able to control it. If not, I'll let you go ahead and do it. OK, good. It looks like that one. OK, so this is actually again, this is a quite, you know, uh, an example of one of the questions in general. As you rise through the troposphere, temperature either rises or falls. You know, so again, straightforward. There is an absolute right answer. And again, I'm going to try to make it that it doesn't sound definitive, as it says in general or most often or that one. So again, it, 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 we can always find exceptions to every rule. But again, I'm looking at actually what happens in the most common. Um, that's actually one that would be as a uh, probably be a one point question. And here's another one. Uh, mid level clouds include all of the following except alto cumulus, alto stratus, nimbo stratus, or strato cumulus. Uh, again, uh, try to be very straightforward with these questions. Again, um, try not to have anything that's going to be, uh, you know, iffy at all. Um, and doing it. we want we, the the object on this one is to have the kids actually have a good time and actually learn some material uh, outside of the school and actually develop an interest and love for weather. So again, uh, I'm never going to try to trick uh, the kiddos, um, you know, into something and making them uh, changing letters or doing anything of that nature. So uh, this is actually one of those questions that uh, you know could. Uh, be seen. And it's a it's a question that has been on the test sometime in the last two years. Um, this is one of the images that would show, uh, and there's a couple different ways that uh, questions that I could ask. You know, I could say, you know, uh, this is an example of what type of cloud, and give actually again four choices. What uh, could ask uh, what kind of precipitation uh, is this usually associated with? Uh, non, little, or heavy? Uh, what level in the atmosphere? Um, you know, it is this this is a low, uh, a, a mid or a high level cloud um, and, uh, and and so forth. Um, and then again, I could show a picture of a front and it's in this one. I could actually again have an arrow pointing to an aspect of the, um, you know, of the weather map and, you know, what is this, you know, what is this item? You know, in this case, a cold front. Um, or I could point to a, um, you know, an isobar, or I can, um, you know, ask a question if I did put it around the isobar or something about actually, again, if isobars are closer together, what kind of weather would you expect? Um, uh, or what kind of conditions would you expect? Uh, so um, those are the kind of questions we, you know, the kind of things that we can go like in this regards, I may show pictures of weather instruments and again what it may be, what does it do uh, and so forth it, it lends to that. Clouds are always good to be able to show. Um, again, you can always find some very good images from that standpoint. Um, again, we've done questions with tornadoes, we've done questions with hurricanes um, and, and so forth down the line. Uh, a few optical phenomenon, uh, so Aurora Borealis or Australia's or um, uh, Rainbows and things of that nature. Again, we can have questions about that as well. Okie doke. So those are kind of examples of what the kids might be seeing. So like I said, the clouds are really good. Um, you know, kind of things that again, making sure your your kids are showing examples of all the the different types of clouds, especially the ten primaries. 
Um, and again, they'll be listed, you know, they'll be listed there. Again, always encourage the kids to know, you know, what level are they in the atmosphere, kind of whether that's associated with them, how, what are they made up of, um, and, and things of that nature. So those are always questions that serve very well for the image portion of the exam. So the kid to be comfortable with, and you can find a whole bunch of different photographs and images uh, of those kind of clouds. Um, there are one, a couple of good books to be able to describe. I don't go ahead, if anybody's looked at a, a book about clouds that they fragment them uh, uh, into multiple different types. There's multiple different types of cumulus clouds and so forth down the line. I don't expect the kids to know that. What I'm looking for is the, the primary 10 and a few of the other items like momentous and lenticular clouds and things of that nature. Um, but that's what I want you to know. I don't expect uh, you to uh, the kids to to know those individual sub variations. Okay, any other questions or concerns? So the resource materials are found on the website, and there's books and everything that that's pretty right. much. What there's books that again you can go. Of course, you can use any item that you feel comfortable with. Those are okay. things that I think actually serve well that I think are, are good ones. Some of them that actually, again, that uh, uh, again can be helpful for both the kids as well as for the parents. Um, again, you should be able to find a lot of these in a library, of course, uh, Amazon and, and so forth, and those will have them. Almost every one of these books are gonna be probably and somewhere between the, you know, the $8 and $15 range. Nothing is extraordinary unless you're getting to some of the textbooks that I kind of, uh, I do, kind of lean out, I do separate, Liv said, if you guys want to geek out, um, you know, there are textbooks that are available uh, from that standpoint. And to tell you the truth, older versions are going to serve you well. I mean, there's mild changes that can go, but again, those things will actually serve you well if that's something that you're interested in doing, if it's something that you'll think you do for a few years, or you just have an interest in weather, um, that, uh, that might be helpful. Um, but, you know, going through, again, uh, weather.com has it. The American Meteorological uh, uh, Society actually has some good websites. The National Weather Service, again, has some really good information. And the National Weather Service, actually, the person who asked that, now that I remember, the National Weather Service does actually have some videos that are geared more towards kids uh, that may serve to be useful. So that might be one of those things that parents and coaches can actually kind of take a look at and if think for the care, the it might serve well for, uh, you know, for the, uh, you know, for their learning environment, and please do. I'm sorry. What was, what was that website that should, you just That should be for the National Weather Service. National Maybe. Weather Service, thank you. Uh-huh. Yep. So, uh, and that should be, uh, it should be nws.gov. Thank you. If not, if you do a Google search for National Weather Service, it'll come up. So, uh, and, and they've they've actually had some they've actually had some good information in the past as well. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm in the process of putting the test together for the uh, you know for the for the uh, districts coming on up. If anybody has any questions, uh, uh, there's uh, ways of being able to put that through the site, and then actually the mod, uh, moderators can actually let me know that there's a question. Um, and I try to, I will try to answer it back as quickly as possible. It'll be answered on the website. So again, the answer, the question and the answer are available to all participants. Um, it may be a question that a lot of people have and just uh, didn't get around to asking. Um, it should be straightforward for the kids. Uh, I hope it's always a good learning environment for them. Um, some kids do well in these kind of in these kind of testing. Other kids like that hands on. Uh, so, you know, that's why I always tell the, the main coaches actually the things you're going to want to set up your kids actually to what their skill sets are best. Some kids love this, you know, love this kind of uh, knowledge base type uh, question answer and the other kids are more hands on. So, all righty.